Hi, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to create a scatter plot in the TI-84. I am simply going to show you how to create it in the calculator, not how to put it on paper. So what we have below is the table shows the number of weekly TV ads run and the number of cars sold for an eight week period. We're going to create a scatter plot for the data and then we're going to interpret the trend of the data in the scatter plot. Okay, so when you're getting started with a scatter plot, it's important to understand which one is going to be your X. And X is known in statistics as the explanatory variable. In algebra, we call it the independent variable, and Y is the response variable. Okay, so the explanatory explains why you get the response that you have or the outcome. Okay, so X is always going to be your input and Y is going to be your output. So what we have here is we have ads run and cars sold. So it makes much more sense to say that the ads run is gonna be the explanatory because if you run more ads, then you expect to see more of a response of numbers of cars sold, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is our X is going to go into L1 in our graphing calculator and Y is going to go into L2. So let me grab my calculator. And to do this, what we're going to do is we're gonna hit stat and edit and it will bring up a spreadsheet. I have data in here and I wanna clear that out. So whenever you're wanting to clear information, just hit clear and enter and it will get rid of all of it. If you accidentally hit delete, notice that it gets rid of the lists completely. It's not gone forever. All you have to do is hit stat and option five, the setup editor, and it magically comes back the next time you come in. So if you accidentally hit delete, it's not gone forever. You just have to hit the setup editor and it'll bring it back. Okay, so I'm gonna type all of my X variables into L1. Okay, and when you get to the bottom, always it's a good idea just to go up to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes because if you type it in wrong, you will get the wrong answer. Okay, and again, just check your data really quickly to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes. Okay, and once you have your data in, what you're going to do is I always um, go to my Y equals screen first to make sure there's nothing here. If I happen to have something like um, a negative and a tan, it's going to give me problems. So I want to make sure that I don't have anything in the screen before I do a scatter plot. So as long as there's nothing on here, you don't have to do anything. If there is something, just clear out everything on here. Okay, after you've checked to make sure that there is nothing that's going to cause problems, we're going to hit second y equals, and we're going to go into plot one, and we're going to turn it on. The last thing I had done in this calculator was create a box plot, so that's what is selected. I want to select the first one. The first one is our scatter plot. Okay, um, our x list, you just want to make sure that your x list is whatever your explanatory variable is, and we put that in L1. My y list is L2. If you used different lists, you could change that here um, by hitting second and whatever list you wanted to. So let's say you used L3, you could do hit, hit second and the number three. Okay, but I want L1 um, because that's where I put my information. Most of the time I don't have to change this because most of the time I just use L1 and L2 to make it easier. Okay, once you have done that, you're going to hit zoom and Number nine, number nine is zoom stat. It will automatically fit the window to fit your data. Okay, so if I hit zoom in nine, you can see that our values show up down here. Okay, and you can see the overall trend of the line. As far as your scale goes, if you wanted to, you can adjust this. And I could say that my X min, I want to go from, instead of negative 2.8, let's go negative two. And our X max, let's go to 30. My X scale, let's count by fives instead of ones. So that's just the X scale tells me what to count by. The Y minimum, let's go ahead and start it at negative one just so we can see the X axis. And our X max, let's go ahead and just do 45. And again, let's count on our Y scale by five. Okay, um, that way when you come and look at it, you can see where your tick marks are that I counted by five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then I counted by fives this way too. Okay, um, if you hit the trace button, 
The trace will tell you the ordered pair. So this was my 0.615, and it just goes down the list in order of how you type them in. So 2031 was the second one on our list. So it will show you the coordinates down at the bottom if you need to put it down on paper. Okay, as far as the trend goes, the trend is just what's happening to your response variable as your x variable increases. So in this case, as my x or my number of ads run increase, my number of cars sold also increase. Okay, so as far as interpreting goes, all you have to do is write something like as the number of ads run in a week increases. The number of cars sold also increase. Okay, if it was going the other direction where it was going down from left to right, you would say as x increases, my y variable decreases. Okay, you could also look and see sometimes you'll have nonlinear patterns in there that show up, um, but you kind of want to just look at what's going on. So with this one, we could say that we could fit a linear trend to this one like it does. It's not a perfect line, but there is definitely an upward linear trend that is happening. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you want me to cover, please let me know that as well.